Hey, everybody. How you doing? It's uh, your buddy Uncle Bruce here live uh, from Zermatt, Switzerland, a little mountain resort here that uh, Jen and I have come to enjoy. We're back. We were here a year ago and we're back again. Um, we're safe and sound. We, uh, we were in uh, Vienna, Austria. Uh, a week ago, Monday, uh, we left Vienna, Austria, flew to Tel Aviv in Israel last week, Monday, and uh, stayed until Friday morning. We were scheduled to leave uh, first thing Friday morning from Tel Aviv, and we did. It was a long uh, departure, we, we, which is typical uh, in normal times. We got to the airport uh, three hours before our flight, which was seven in the morning. So we were there at four in the morning after getting up at three in the morning. Uh, that was going to be a long day. Uh, we went through the airport security and everything else and got on our plane. And <clears throat> our plane took off at just around seven in the morning, Friday last week. And uh, we landed in uh, Zurich, Switzerland on time. Uh, in the afternoon, and the next morning, we woke up to the horrifying news that now the entire world is aware of. Uh, what had started happening not even 24 hours after we left, and uh, we had no idea, of course, uh, what was going to happen. Um, I made a video about this uh, this experience that many of you have noticed and watched. I put it on this channel. I put the exact same video on my other channel, Traveling with Bruce. And uh, both uh, both channels are getting uh, some viewership of that video. I tried to just explain what it was like for Jen and I being in Tel Aviv for the four days we were there and the kind of, kind of vibes I was getting uh, me personally, uh, at age 68, uh, there were certain vibes that uh, weren't sitting with me too well, but nothing happened to us. We were fine. We had a wonderful, wonderful visit with our friend Beach Boy. We surprised him uh, when we landed on the Monday. Uh, we uh, reached out to him, and uh, uh, he had asked uh, on the air, previous Friday, he was asking, uh, could we get together for a one-on-one, -on -one, perhaps? Uh, he was thinking, we'll do a one-on-one -on, -one on camera. And I uh, sent an email to him and said, well, here's some photos of uh, from our hotel room. Why don't we, instead of doing a one-on-one -on, -one on camera, why don't we, why don't we get together for dinner? Uh, and he's noticing these buildings that are from our hotel room just outside. We're on the 15th floor. we got a great view. And these buildings have uh, logos, corporate logos on them in Hebrew. <laughs> and he's going, are you here? <laughs> and he was, he had no idea. So it was a great get together. We got together with him on, um, on Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and Thursday night. We had dinner with him for three nights in a row. And he took us out to different places. And the, the first night we went out, we went to... Uh, the old port, uh, the is the original uh, port on the Mediterranean Sea, known as Jaffa, and uh, this is a, a port with with buildings in the area that are a thousand or more years old, uh, maybe longer than that. Um, it, it's an ancient place with small little roads and whatever, and he had found a restaurant in that area for us to visit with, and the the interesting thing for me is now that we're here, we're out, um, when I see maps of uh, Israel on the newscasts, like you are probably watching, you can see where Gaza is and so on, uh, Jaffa is uh, way south of Tel Aviv proper. It's as close to uh, Gaza as we got. Um, not that we were a mile away from Gaza, but we were quite a bit closer to it. We had a wonderful time. We we really enjoyed the uh, the first evening. Food is fabulous. Uh, he took us to a restaurant that specialized in Mediterranean and Lebanese and I don't know what cooking. It was it was awesome. It was really nice. He just handled everything. He just told the waiters bring us samples of everything. <laughs> 
And the next night, we went out to a, a classic uh, Jewish deli um, uh, for Israel, an Israel deli, not a New York Jewish deli, an Israeli Jewish deli. And we had some very unique food there. Um, we were in an area of Tel Aviv that would be uh, very common for most of you in North America. If you are in your 20s and 30s, uh, or if your children are your, in your 20s and 30s, they would be hanging out in your hometown in districts like this, bars, restaurants, bakeries, small shops, and so on. Very comfortable, very active, a lot of young people. And our third night, we went out to an Italian restaurant. Uh, I insisted. I said, I I would like some carb carbonara. I want some ca spaghetti with bacon in it. Can you find a place like that? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure enough. Ended up at an Italian restaurant. <laughs> they had all the pork you wanted. Uh, it was fine. Um, we enjoyed it. We, we had a good time with it all. And uh, good food, good eating, and good company. And it went it went well. That phone call you hear is our daughter arriving uh, in in Missouri, and so uh, you may want to try the balcony. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. Right? Uh, don't want to disturb you folks, but uh, she's arrived also in Zurich, so uh, we're getting together shortly. Anyway, the restaurants were great. Uh, Beach Boy is fantastic. We had a really great time with him, and it was just super to see him and. Uh, like I said, that was Thursday night. Um, we went to our hotel. We were at our hotel by about 9 in the evening, 10 in the evening. And we were up at uh, 3. So we were only in the hotel for five more hours when we packed up. But well, we had packed up already. And then we headed by cab to the airport. Uh, nobody out there. Uh, complete. You know, nobody on the roads at 3.30 in the morning on a, on a Friday morning. And uh, get, went through the airport and did the security thing to get out. And uh, like I said, we, we left at 7 and landed in uh, Zurich in the early afternoon. And uh, here we are. And we're okay. Now we're in Zermatt. So there's our, that's our story about um, Tel Aviv and Israel. Uh, the last normal days of Tel Aviv for a long, long time. And... Um, and I'm sorry to see all of the, uh, you know, the, the whole thing happen the way it did. Uh, shocking. We're so grateful. <coughs> Jennifer and I are so grateful to have been able to get out. And, um, and um, you know, we were not escaping anything, uh, nothing like that. Um, so uh, we were just leaving under normal circumstances the last full day. And then the next day it was unnormal. So there you are. Uh, we'll be watching on TV like everybody else going forward. Anyway, welcome all. Uh, uh, welcome all to the uh, channel. It's great to have you here. Um, uh, we're watching the markets uh, closely. I'm noticing that um, all morning until about a half an hour ago, the markets were up, up, up. Uh, the, the Dow was up. S&P, NASDAQ, uh, Europe was up um, nicely, up 1.5% in Europe, actually. We had a good day like yesterday's U.S. markets closed nicely. Then about a half an hour ago, we began to falter, and the U.S. market started to dip a little. Uh, now we're kind of hanging around the break-even mark. Uh, the Dow is holding a 36-point pre-market gain, but uh, s and is only up a point. NASDAQ is only up 2.75. Uh, oil, crude, crude oil, down 20 cents a barrel. was down 40 for hours this morning. Now it's only down 20 cents. I uh, had a $4 pop yesterday. I don't think that's sustainable myself, but um, we have to watch now, as uh, you are probably hearing on the media, you're going to have to keep an eye for um, a possible expansion of the conflict in that region. And that's why all eyes are now on Lebanon to the north, um, Egypt to the south, although Egypt is not necessarily an issue, but uh, other parties, let's put it this way. Uh, so it's a, it's a mess, and um, oil is on uh, tinder hooks, uh, eggshells. Oil might go up if it gets worse, but it might slump back if it um, doesn't get worse or, or stays that as it is, but it's not good. It's it's just not it's not good. All right, there's that. A um, couple of the things. Uh, interest rates are being talked about a lot because um, when you have disruptions like this, uh, you're going to have 
uh, economic impacts. Uh, the question now is, will they spread out? And uh, the Israeli economy is going to be in some issues, going to have some issues now. Obviously, uh, import exports, um, free freedom of movement for people and goods and services and so on. Uh, but uh, we're watching interest rates overall uh, with the U.S. rates, European rates. We're watching uh, deficits being declared by governments. We're watching, obviously, what's happening in Ukraine. That continues on. And obviously, um, economists are saying, we hate to keep bringing it up, but there's a clown show going on in Washington, and we're watching that too because the unstable part of the administration, the Congress, uh, which is now a mess, we have to watch that and we have to pay attention to it and we have to talk about it because they're making us talk about it. We don't want to talk about the Congress in the United States government, but the United States Congress is making us talk about them because these guys are in a complete mess. And... Um, that is not helping things. Um, but hey, uh, agendas are agendas and political objectives are political objectives and Americans have to deal with their clown show. The Brits are dealing with their clown show, the Brexit mess. The Germans are dealing with their clown show. The Russians are dealing with their clown show. France, Italy, Spain, everybody has a clown show. Uh, it's just what degree of craziness is your clown show? And there is what we have to kind of go. Welcome to 2023, the so-called new normal. Aaron, you are correct. Canada is a clown show too. Absolutely. There is a clown show in every country. And uh, we're just sitting here going, what, what, what? How? Uh, yeah. And there, there's the story, kids, and uh, we just move on. For those of you who are watching me on a regular basis, your number one objective is, I just want to make money, Chris. Uh, it's nothing personal. You know, I just want to make some bucks. Um, I can't rely on my employer to give me a raise that is going to out. I'm always behind the cost of living with the job I've got. The only way I can get ahead. There's two ways. I either, well, three ways. Win a lottery, which is the long shot. Uh, get a big fat raise, which is a long shot. Uh, or I quit my job and go elsewhere and get a better paying pay packet for what I do, which a lot of people have done. And then I guess the fourth way, find additional income streams to not be dependent on my employer as much as I have been. And for many of you here, this channel has helped and um to say uh, to say that jen and i are really happy about that is an understatement we're thrilled at how well so many of you are doing here with your investments uh because you're not relying on a hot stock tip to make you some money you're not trying to outguess the stock market you're not trying to figure out well jim kramer says this i'll do that uh you're not a contrarian in that kind of way because once in a while you get lucky, other times you don't. You have become on this channel option writers and you have become the casino. And you have decided that as the casino, my odds are a lot greater than the gamblers in my casino. And so you've turned into Las Vegas and I congratulate you. Uh, you are doing what major uh, investor uh, in institutional investors are doing this. You're on the side of the hedge funds. You're on the side of the banks, the insurance companies, the pension funds, the mutual funds, the ETFs. You are doing uh, through what we're talking about here. You are doing what institutional traders are doing, and you're getting paid to do it in your own way. <clears throat> some of you have five and ten to twenty thousand dollar accounts. Some of you have twenty, forty, sixty thousand dollar accounts. Some of you have fifty, sixty, one hundred thousand dollar accounts. Some of you have two, four, eight hundred thousand dollar accounts. Some of you have accounts in the millions. You're all benefiting in in a percentage that is giving you a return that is beating to hell a ten year treasury note from the government of the United States of America. You're not equaling what you could get from a pension fund or a hedge fund or an ETF or a dividend payout from a company. 
you are far exceeding the markets and you're making money whether the markets go up or whether they go down it really doesn't seem to matter you're making a return on your capital if you're one of these folks over here if you're one of the gold bagel members of this channel you're paying 25 dollars a month to youtube to be a member here you're commenting here on the comment bar uh you're getting the trade alert show before this show starts and you're now getting a daily trading tip um from me as a suggested trade that you might want to consider and i'm trying to throw as many benefits to the gold bagel members as i can to thank them profusely for their support of this channel and uh, it looks like uh, for the last couple of weeks, uh, almost every trade tip we have gone over is pretty well paying off um, with a return. Um, those of you who have taken lessons through this channel, you've been here a while, you know the routine. If you're a rookie, you don't know the routine. Um, we started, I started bringing out lessons on how the stock market works how options are created, where they come from, why they exist, how they uh, trade, um, how they die, how they appreciate, how they depreciate, all of the ins and outs of the option market. I started lessons in June of 2021 with my followers at that time. And uh, that was lesson number one. We just did lesson 16 two, three months ago. Uh, lesson 17 will be out before the end of the year. Um, they keep coming and each lesson adds on to the next lesson to the next lesson. And in effect, what has been happening with this channel is we've, we've turned this channel into a little bit of a college, uh, uh, place where a lot of folks have learned a lot about the market and the little things about the stock market. They had no idea existed to give them a better handle on why is it that certain investors seem to lose money all the time and other investors just keep doing really well and how these uh, mega huge <laughs> multi-million multi-billion dollar funds operate and uh, many of you are now understanding that uh, when you see a private jet coming in for final approach in your hometown or wherever you're hanging out chances are that that individual up there that's in that jet being being ferried to where they're going could well be an individual that is benefiting nicely from the stock market the real estate market they're doing something different than what the average individual investor is doing and we have brought forward to you as best as possible the uh, the information you need to know about how options work and so congratulations to those of you who have stuck around for 16 classes um those of you who've taken four or five or six of them and you're working on the rest i say keep it going um the more you hang out with this gang of regulars that are here every day and the more lessons you grab and take that are 150 bucks a piece you'll become a you'll be start becoming an option trader you're going to start becoming a writer of options and you're going to start making money i am i'm convinced of it it's happened thousands of times on this channel it continues to happen uh, you put in some time and effort, you will be rewarded handsomely, but you got to want it. And that's the difference uh, uh, about this channel than versus others. I don't come up with one hot stock tip that's going to go to the moon and make you 1,000 times your money. Those don't exist. The tips exist, but the results generally don't. What we do is we grind money out of the market. We grind it out of the market every day, every week, every month. And we take it and we take it we say thank you very much sir may i have another and there are a number of you here who have been able to build your momentum on your returns as you are growing your accounts and for those of you who are uh, 20 and 30 something you're you're new and you're newbies and you're learning all of this uh it's an exciting time this market is now all on one of these telephones um this never happened before in, in my 20s and 30s this didn't exist you guys can make money in a unique way that didn't exist 30 40 years ago uh those of you who are now in your 40s and 50s you've been plugging away at work and you're in your careers and you've built equity in your house and you're getting those kids out of there getting them on their way you're now in an in need of building up your assets so that you can retire comfortably 
for all the work you've done to get here. Um, you're finding the lessons very handy in that area as well. And then those of you who are in your 50s and 60s and 70s who are either retired already, about to retire, uh, or coming up to 5, 10 years from now, you are looking to retire, or you wanted to retire 10 years ago, but you couldn't. Couldn't retire three years ago. You have to keep working. You have assets, but you just need them to generate a better return to give you a shot at packing it in. This channel might be exactly what you need to get to that level. Um, if you if you make an investment in the first four or five classes, I am pretty sure you're going to quickly realize, oh my God, I have no idea that what I've been sitting on for 25 years, what I've been holding forever in my accounts, I could have been making all this extra income from this stuff by offering options against it. I had no idea I could do that. I only thought retirement plans could do that. I only thought hedge funds could do that. I only thought billionaires with yachts and private jets in Dubai, I only thought those guys could do that. I didn't know I could do that. All of you can become an option writer. And if you've taken the latest class, number 16, that has been a game changer for so many of you. You've learned the new trick, which is called, it's not a new trick, it's just new to you. Uh, credit spreads, iron condors, making money with other people's money in the option market. And it's just blown minds all over the place. I have viewers that are here worldwide and I uh, people visit, catch up with us in Europe, they catch up with us in, in America. And they tell me I have changed their lives uh, with all of the programs we've brought forward, how you can write options on stock, write options on options, how you can write cash secured puts, how you can write poor man covered calls, iron condors, credit spreads. It's been a huge game changer for many, many, many of you. And there are millions more out there who could use this service if only they knew this channel existed. Unfortunately, the brokerage firms out there are not going to be all that aggressive to show you how to become smart option writers. They would rather you buy and sell stock and try to find a quick flip on Apple or, or, or on NVIDIA or on whatever hot stock of the day. Uh, they love that you buy and sell stuff all the time, whether you lose or not. They don't care because they're bookies. They're just going to take your wager. They take a spread of every trade you make and they're loving the business. Option writers are not always as active as regular option players. Option writers will create options, take the money up front, the premium, sit on the premium and let options expire virtually worthless. And there isn't a lot of commissions in the, uh, in the end of that trade for the broker. It's a great trade for the writer. The option writer makes all the money and keeps a vast majority of it. The brokers get very little of the action. So they're not as eager to get you into option writing. They'd rather you be a uh, an option buyer and a, a stock flipper. Uh, that's what they'd rather you become. And they're not going to spend a lot of money to educate you on how to become a, uh, a pretty talented option writer. They're not going to do it. It's just not in their wheelhouse. And they realize that out of 100% of all <clears throat> market participants, 10% might be writers, and uh, they're just not going after 10% of the market. They're going after 90% of the market uh, to, to go after business. And that's the Robin Hood philosophy and the Fidelity and Schwab, you name it. It's the way they roll. However, <clears throat> on this channel, the, the folks here, they talk about the platforms they like using to do their iron condor trading to do their cash secured put uh, uh, transactions, to do their covered call writing, poor man covered calls. They uh, share with their fellow viewers who they like to use for platforms. And they're very handy to, in some cases, to do these trades. But boy, you need to understand how options work and the psychology of the market. And talk about psychological um, brain twists in the last five days. Yeah, the investment community out there has gone through a complete uh, turnover in emotions with this, with this Israeli war situation breaking out out of nowhere. It is just upending the apple cart. And it's going to be a while before we 
get back to any kind of a normal. So you better be aware of how emotions and how uh, strategies can change in a microsecond and why. <clears throat> and then you're going to be ahead of the crowd. Uh, to make money in this market, you only have to be smarter than half the other players. You only have to be in the top half of, of, uh, of the market. That's it. Uh, if you're in the 60% six, range and, and only 40% of the market is smarter than you, you should make money. If you can be in the top 25%, you, you should make even more money. And if you're in the top 10%, uh, you can have a field day around here. And um, I'm trying to get you into the top 1%. But you got to want it. you got to want to learn that much. Um, and not all of you are like that. I, I'm up front. I've said it from day one. This channel is not for every single investor out there. It's It just isn't. What I talk about doing, what you guys are going to be doing here, what you have been doing here, is what most channels don't talk about. The, the channels out there on YouTube and all the... Uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, the websites and all of the uh, all of the uh, live uh, uh, commentary channels they talk about buying low and selling high that's what they do they 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 buy they sell that's the that's the mentality of 99 90% of the world we do it the opposite we're, we're george costanza from seinfeld we we sell first and buy back that's what we do we sell at high prices and buy back at cheap prices and it's a lot easier to buy stuff than to sell stuff. I don't know if you figured that out. Have you ever tried to sell a car, a private car yourself? You ever tried to sell something at a garage sale and you put all your stuff out on a table and you think you're going to get a dollar for everything on that table and people come up to you and say, I'll offer you a dime? <laughs> Has that happened to you? It's hard to be a seller. It's not easy to be a seller. But if you master it, uh, the buying side is easy. You put in the stink bids, and you'll be shocked at how many times you can buy stuff at prices you thought you couldn't get it at. Welcome to this channel and our philosophy here. I'm glad you're with us. Thank you all for joining me. It's great to see you. Luca, ciao, baby. Nice to have you here. Welcome back yourself. Uh, love having you all here. Um, it's great that you're that you're with us. Uh, good morning from Karen. Um uh, James is asking, is anyone else writing on, uh, is that Pal Palantir? I got eight covered calls. I'm looking to move out of GameStop, deep in money calls. I'm writing more PLTR covered calls. Premiums are as good or better right now than GameStop in relation to stock price. He's curious. Uh, some folks are making moves from uh, GameStop to AI. Some folks are going into, going into Unity. They're, they're going all over the place. And others stay with GameStop. Up to you. Um, Whatever works for you is where you uh, do your option writing. That's what it's all about. Thank you for the thumbs ups, everybody. They're coming in already. Lorraine is here. White Feather, DH Ruda, Dean, Comical Name, Octavio. Thank you, guys. Hector Salamanca, Alex, good morning to all of you. I'm so pleased to see you. Drew is here. Uh, thank you for popping through. Um, what else is going on here? Uh, uh let's go let's go good morning from maria powell number 52 we're glad you're safe we are too we are so happy to be here uh beach boy was on discord says maria yesterday um and uh beach boy and family in the shepherd husky mix are all fine says alberto uh fantastic thank you all and uh again uh, i wish all of you uh, safe travels and hopefully everything's working out well for you again thank you all for supporting this youtuber um we're here for the week and then we head to munich uh finish our european part of the trip and we're heading to secaucus new jersey now news uh for secaucus new jersey i wanted to bring this up for you today uh, we're doing a meet and greet uh many of you are aware of this some of you uh uh have heard we're going to do a meet and greet by the way we're at 64 thumbs ups and counting thank you everybody keep them coming uh, but we have an update. We have a change of venue for the meet and greet. Uh, that's the bad news. The good news is uh, you don't have to move your car. <laughs> uh, where we were going to do the meet and greet, I had expected to do the, to do the meet and greet at the um, Harmony Suites Hotel uh, in Secaucus. Um, there's a parking garage right beside the hotel. 
Uh, we've decided to move it uh, right next door to the other side of the parking garage. We're going to do the meet and greet at the Outback Steakhouse in Secaucus, New Jersey. Um, the reasoning is uh, simple. Um, we were talking to the hotel about a uh, meeting room and we were trying to figure out the layout of the tables and chairs and we were thinking of some snacks and some coffee and tea and what um by the time we figured out uh what we needed and what they could provide us we were this far apart with regards to um the two of us uh the the hotel had a room that was much larger than what we needed and we didn't need that kind of a cavernous space uh, and the costs were just unbelievable uh, but again it's a big room we ended up deciding i just decided why i contacted the manager at the uh, outback they said that we'd love to have you uh, <laughs> uh from the number of folks that have committed to coming to the event and again if you're coming let me know so i know how many reservations i need but they said we can handle you guys no problem at all we'll set up some tables for you we'll put you off to the side there you can have yourselves a good old time and uh, i thought you know what this is what's going to happen so if you want to have a uh, you have a nice steak uh, you want to have some ribs or just a sandwich or some salad or, or just you know a soda or water come on out to the outback steakhouse one o'clock in the afternoon october the 21st coming up um that's in uh, in uh, 11 days in Secaucus, New Jersey, and come and see us. You can park right next door to the restaurant. There's a park parking garage there, and we'll be we'll be together from one to three, one to four, something like that. We'll do the old meet and greet, and it'll go great. And it's on me, so come on out and enjoy. Uh, would love to have you come by. And Jen will be there, and uh, we look forward to seeing you all together. All right, that's the story uh, about the meet and greet on October 21, Secaucus, New Jersey. Uh, there's a bus from Manhattan that drops you off right in front of the hotel, the uh, the Harmony Suites, which is right next door to the Outback Steakhouse. So easy to get there, easy to get back to downtown New York, uh, to the to the, uh, <clears throat> to the uh, terminal building, to the uh, Port Authority. No problem at all. Love to have you if you can join us. It would be uh, lovely to see you. All right, everybody. Thank you all uh, for joining us so far today. Um, we've got a lot to watch. We'll, we'll follow what the market wants to do uh, it looks like the market is not going to be in the red it doesn't look like it wants to go in the red but it doesn't look too green either we are we're now up 58 on the Dow which is a little better than a few minutes ago maybe 20 minutes ago s and is up three Nasdaq's up just five so th these two markets are not doing anything the crude oil is back down 94 cents a barrel where it was a couple of hours ago and has been most of the morning um, so there's a little pullback there uh, at the moment. Uh, Rocket Lab was up 12 cents yesterday. It's up another almost six cents this morning, 467. Uh, we were down to 360, what, two weeks ago, three weeks ago when I put out the buy recommendation on it. We're now at 460, slowly cur uh, climbing back to five bucks. SoFi uh, was up 19 yesterday, up another five today. 823 the GameStop was up 32 yesterday got the 1540 now it's at 1550 so it's come back almost a dollar um Matterport uh, 219 is up like a couple of cents this morning uh, 23 and me is sitting at 82 don't have any news on on 23 and me at the moment Spire is at 419 up 12 cents today ATIP, no change, uh, 825 last I saw. Smart rent might be at 278, up 13 cents. Um, Apple is down 94 cents, was up 150 yesterday. Goldman was up 13 yesterday, it's up 88 now. So it's at 313.50. Cisco was up 47 cents yesterday, it's up another 21 right now at 54.14. Uh, Tesla was down only 86 cents yesterday it's up two four it's down 214 today sorry now 203 so not doing much arc innovations the kathy woods um, etf up 15 cents yesterday up three cents right now at 39.39 microsoft was uh, up 256 yesterday it's now up another buck 29 
331 a share. A Pfizer up seven yesterday. It's up a penny now. HPQ was up 18 cents. 2608, no change this morning. Google up 77 yesterday to 139.50, unchanged right now. Amazon was up 30 cents yesterday. It's down a penny right now, 128.25. NVIDIA down 489 yesterday, up uh, six cents right now. Not much going on, 452. Unity uh, was down 45 cents. It got an upgrade this morning from some analyst. It's up 123, though. Uh, $30.93. It was a dollar higher than this earlier this morning. We'll see if that translates into the market itself. AI, um, C3.AI Inc. was down four cents yesterday. It's now down seven at 24.65. Adobe up 261 yesterday, up nine cents right now, 529.38. Netflix up 444 yesterday, down a penny this morning, 385.94. Spiders, they're up 38 cents this morning. The triple Qs are up 14 cents this morning. And that's what's going on over there. There's the, uh, the story uh, as I see it, trying to cover as much of this market as we can as we watch what's happening in the Middle East. And that will uh, dictate markets as well. It'll affect markets, um, what happens in Israel. We're looking at the Dow up right now, 71, S&P up almost six points, NASDAQ up 14. These markets are recovering a little bit of ground right now to kind of get back to where they were earlier this morning. That's the story, and I'm sticking to it. There it is. That's the deal. Uh, welcome all to, uh, to see you here and, uh, you know, I'm glad you're here. JD, glad you're safe and sound. Uncle B, thank you again for those of you out there who have become um, uh, viewers of this channel, hitting the thumbs up button, becoming su subscribers to the channel. Appreciate the subscribers. And also members of this channel. You are keeping us alive. Uh, you helped us get to Tel Aviv. You helped us get out. And we thank you uh, very much for um, being part of the uh, the gang. If you're a, a Chillin' with Uncle Bruce member, a 10 bucks a month donation to YouTube, I thank you for that. Um, if you're a gold uh, a bagel member of this channel, um, uh, you guys rock. Uh, we thank you really from the bottom of our hearts. You're absolutely the reason this channel financially continues to work. Uh, we, we thank you oh so much um become a if you could please become or consider becoming a gold bagel member we try to make it worth your while um by giving you these daily trade tips and uh let me know if you're if you're doing okay on them let me know how you're doing uh, uh, they look they look to be working out a bunch of these trade tips we did lately have been uh, condors iron condor trades uh, which allow you out there uh, to do a, an iron condor with uh, with not a lot of capital. I mean, you can do an iron condor with a couple of thousand dollars of, uh, of equity. You can do five or ten for you know easily less than ten thousand dollars of equity, five thousand equity, depending on which ones you write. Um, and um, uh, I love it when I get messages from viewers who say stuff like, uh, you know, Bruce. Uh, before you talked about these condors, I, I was writing call options and, uh, you know, I'd have to wait six, eight weeks uh, to, to, to cash in, um, you know, on, a, on an option, right? Which again, you know, was more than I ever made before. But now that you're showing us how to do iron condors, holy crap, um, I'm generating money every week from these. Um, never thought I could do this with such a small account. Um, Man, this is fantastic. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, showing us how these iron condors work. Um, for some of you out there, um, you're only maybe 10 or 20 or 30 iron condors at a time away from being able to say goodbye to your day jobs. Um, uh, there are condor trades available, uh, conservative condor trades, where you can write, you know, 30 contracts, um, bring in you know, 
five grand in cash and uh, spit out 1500 to close the position out, net out $3,500 and do a trade like that one or two a month, uh, maybe three and four or five every two months. The kind of cash flow from that uh, could theoretically alter your economic reality. It could throw your credit cards, you could throw cash at your credit cards very often uh, and very quickly make them go away. Um, you can knock off a student loan a heck of a lot sooner. You can knock off a car loan. You can, uh, in effect, replace a full-time check from a full-time employer that is just driving you up the wall. And you can decide, you know what? I, I can work part-time with this company over here uh, from my house. And uh, I can bring in 2500 a month with those guys. And then what I'm bringing in from the market over here I'm making more money than I'm working than working full time. Uh, why would I? Why would I work full time? Um, you may have read our, also articles out there. I'm sure you're noticing this. Uh, more and more of these stories are showing up, like um, story out of like Texas, uh, how Austin, Dallas, Houston, and other cities where business is good, um, companies are expanding growing their footprints, making money, they're hiring people. But the office towers in these downtown um, mega cities are vacant, uh, massive, massive vacancies. Downtown San Francisco, um, that, that's been the leader in America of hardship. Uh, downtown core just getting annihilated. And can you blame people saying to themselves, hey, you know, <laughs> I like making a hundred thousand bucks a year, but I don't like spending five thousand a month in rent. I, I just, I, I'm just not going to do that. Plus, I'm going to commute to an office and try to park my car, or I'm going to commute in and commute out, and I'm going to be subjected to the possibility of uh, violence from all kinds of shoplifting gangs and stuff happening in my hometown. I, I don't think so. I think I'm quite happy being in the burbs or being you know, 500 miles away from where my employer is actually located, I'll work in, in an area where I want to live, where my wife and children and, you know, family is safe and we're really happy with the weather and the surroundings and the prices are much more reasonable. Why would I work at places like that? Now, if I can add to that kind of income level, Uncle Bruce's... Um, a channel the possibilities that uh, the viewers that uncle bruce has if i can join those kids and make the kind of money that some of those kids are making hey i'm never going back to an office downtown and uh, it's quite shocking how many uh, office towers apparently in new york uh new york city itself uh, manhattan is a shadow of its former self as far as the intensity of the number of people coming into work every day Baltimore, Philadelphia, uh, Pittsburgh, Boston, Detroit, Chicago, uh, St. Louis, Miami, Atlanta, Phoenix. Uh, the, amount, the number of commuters uh, across the board all, uh, to the e east and west, north and south, Canada, the same thing, Calgary, Edmonton, Vancouver, Toronto. There are prices of uh, condos in downtown cores that are dropping dramatically. Um, have you heard about the uh, Disney World uh, latest stories coming out of that region in Orlando? Um, the prices of real estate, of homes, private homes in Orlando, mm -hmm. in certain parts of Orlando are dropping, um, especially these, uh, these uh, townhomes and condos that were being used by investors for Airbnb uh, to try to, you know, rent uh, a, an entire facility or house to a family that we're going to spend a week in Orlando to go see Disney World and Universal and all the other attractions. Apparently, the numbers are way down uh, in these parks, and these these uh, property owners are getting crushed with uh, <clears throat> dramatic demand declines what they're getting for their air airbnbs is much lower 
the cities themselves have stepped in and are doing a tax grab on these guys, making it almost impossible to, to make a decent return. And uh, real estate values are dropping. And of course, with seven and 8% interest rates for mortgages, uh, you can imagine a half a million dollar to a million dollar property. Uh, you want to run that with a seven, eight percent mortgage, you are paying dearly uh, to carry that kind of property. This is what's going on out there, uh, more and more of it. And so folks are figuring out, you know, there are regions in this country, in the U.S., in Canada, elsewhere, I can move to that would be far nicer to live in at a far more friendly uh, price and if I can make dough watching a guy like Uncle Bruce and, and taking his classes and contacting him for a one-on-one -on -one once in a while and, and uh, hanging out with the gang over here, why, would I, why wouldn't I do that? Why would I uh, go to work every day uh, in a downtown core where to park my car is 50 bucks a day, 80 bucks a day, whatever these folks are paying? I mean, I can't believe some of the parking rates that certain cities uh, you know, that people are paying in certain cities across North America. It's scary. The cost of gas is flying up and uh, insurance on your car. Then you've got theft issues, brazen daylight, break and enters in these vehicles. I mean, it's pretty bad. Um, it's been an interesting thing, I got to say. Um, anyway, H. Gregory, uh, number 75, uh, glad you're safe, Uncle Bruce. It's got to be a surreal feeling. I got to tell you guys, the longer we're, the further apart we get from having been in Tel Aviv and watching on television here uh, what's going on now in Israel, uh, we are stunned. Uh, Jen and I do not recognize what we're seeing. It is a complete uh, 180 uh, from what we saw. Although, if you watched my video, you did notice I was saying how I had this... Uh, uncomfortable feeling in the pit of my stomach uh, just i just didn't feel as comfortable as i do feel when i'm in in europe proper here uh, switzerland austria uh, germany denmark the uk um i didn't feel that same way um in in tel aviv it it was different uh and at the time, I knew that 80% um, and 20% was the split between uh, Arab and, and, uh, and Jewish uh, people living in Tel Aviv. The 20 percenters, um, you, you could tell, um, even last week, you could tell they're just, there's something different about these folks, about how comfortable they are in Tel Aviv. Um, they didn't feel as confident and as comfortable as the 80 percent did uh and again i understand that that i get that i get uh when you're in the majority and you're it's working for you there i understand the 20 percenters though i could feel the tension and this made me feel uncomfortable and everything was normal last week um it was a most interesting um vibe um never felt it before never never felt it before yeah i don't like going to places where i don't feel really comfy um yeah and uh, now that we're back in uh, switzerland we do feel rather comfortable here um jen and i have been talking openly just openly talking about we're kind of looking forward to going back to california <laughs> this winter because Unfortunately, Jennifer's uh, knee is acting up on her, and uh, we're going to have to get a knee replacement here. It, that seems to be the indication, and uh, that means Australia is delayed uh, by a year, and uh, a knee replacement takes its place. But it'll be done in California, and at, we're very comfortable there. I mean, we've got the success of her hip replacement already as evidence of how comfortable we are, but, you know, you do what you got to do but i tell you uh i am just counting we're both counting our lucky stars that we didn't arrive on monday and all hell broke loose tuesday morning uh we, we were we we're just because i was worried i would be worried about we can't get out till friday that's when our ticket is out 
are we going to be able to get a ticket out of here on Tuesday, uh, Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday? The airport got shut down. Uh, there were sirens going off at the airport. Uh, I don't know if you saw this image. Uh, this is an image we saw not even 24 hours after we left. This was uh, Nick. I think that's Nick Robertson is his name. He's a war correspondent for CNN. We were literally right there where he is right there in that picture we were there getting on our airplane to get out these people behind him just got off an airplane like he did they were arriving in tel aviv 24 hours later and the air the uh, the uh, air sirens were going off um and they were being yelled at get down get down get down get down because they could hear explosions in the background as rockets were going up and the uh, dome, iron dome defense system was going off, shrapnel was falling in the region, and they didn't know whether anything would land where they were at all. Uh, it was just unbelievable. That's how weird it was for us. I mean, we just, we could not believe it. We couldn't believe it. But uh, now that I've had time to assess and I digest it, this, this, this uncomfortable feeling in my gut, um, it was there for a reason. And uh, I, I didn't anticipate this. Uh, I just anticipated kind of a, I wouldn't want to be one of those 20 percenters uh, in a land of 80 percenters. I, I, I could understand why the 80 percenters were, go, go, baby, go full speed ahead take this country to its potential and everything else. I, I got it. I, I know that feeling, but the 20 percenters weren't part of it. They were not being offered the same upside and uh, they knew they were limited in their upside. They, there was a point they could get to and no further. And uh, I tell you, it, it didn't sit, it doesn't sit well with me, but you know, it's not, this is not my town. It's not my country. I'm just a guest. And, uh, we've been we've left and we're here and that's all i can say that's all i can that's all i can do anyway i'm, I'm glad we're here um amy i live in orlando and the parks are crazy busy i don't know why they're saying they're slow literally there yesterday laughing out loud wavily i've been to israel i know exactly what you mean uh good morning from constantine uh thumbs up number 84 maria powell uh, amy my friends that go every year with their family just got back and said it was packed as always isn't that interesting Amy, uh, Maria, it's really been a, as busy as usual, and real estate is still high here, so I really understand the reports from the media. Uh, Maria, well, that is the media laughing out loud. Well, as I said, I, I was looking at, uh, I was, I was just, I caught some real estate info, and uh, uh, that's what I, I had let, I've been led to believe. But again, I don't know the region, deep region, everything normal. I, I don't. It's not my turf, so I can't give you expert anything but uh, i will say that uh, certain properties in america at eight percent interest are going to become extremely difficult to carry for people who are going from a three percent interest rate up to an eight percent interest rate there are people who are going to be forced to sell real estate uh there are those out there who bought at the high of the market at with only three four percent interest rates hoping they would flip in a year or two and they're not being given that opportunity because they're already upside down or they're underneath what they paid for the property but they still have equity in the game but rates aren't going down anytime soon from where i see it canada same thing uh europe similar uh it's not rosy everywhere i guess i'll put it that way anyway there it is jl mark thank you my friend Thumbs up number 87. Thanks, man. We're only 13 away from 100 because JL helped us out. Uh, thank you for those of you out there who are putting the thumbs ups out there for us. 87 and counting. We love you, folks. Um, please help us with these uh, thumbs ups. If you can keep them coming, uh, that would be the best. The more, the merrier. All right. Uh, and by the way, if any of you out there are picking up a class uh, on my website and uh, you run into any kind of issues, uh, 
you know, you buy class number one, number three, number six, number eight, whatever, and the link isn't working properly, just send me a private email. Um, you can find it here on my homepage or inside the web uh, connection. The web page also has my email. Send me an email. Just let me know. Uh, Bruce, I just picked up class number so-and-so. The, I can't get the link to work. After the show's over, you betcha. We'll get you set up. Don't worry. And uh, you'll be studying for sure. Away you go. Uh, Waverly, uh, I'm number eight something. Um, fat fingered on that. Uh, maybe you're number 88. I don't know. Uh, welcome, uh, Waverly. And thank you for helping out with the thumbs up. So we're opening in five minutes. The, the, the market's going to open up. The Dow is climbing again up 98. And S&P has managed to come back to be plus 7.75. NASDAQ is up, but it's only up 16 points. We're, we're not up substantially, but we're just a little to the green side. But this is not enough to tell me we're going to have an up day here. Uh, this is not enough. A third of a point for the Dow, that can be wiped out in two minutes. We need a buy wave. And I don't know if we're going to get one for sure. There's unease out there for obvious reasons. There's a lot to follow here. A lot of chess pieces are moving here. We'll see how this all plays out. Crude oil still down 43 cents in uh, Texas at the moment. Yep, Waverly. Yep, Bruce, you got it. Number 88. Maria Powell sold Tesla October 20, 245. Cash secured puts for 709 yesterday. Thank you, Uncle Bruce. Uh, wow make nothing but money is what i want to hear here uh fantastic um hopefully that uh and all of you out there are going to do really really well with your trades 258 right now on uh, tesla um beautiful stuff the higher it goes the more profit is being made on those cash secured puts i see 1550 on uh, gamestop uh, holding a little gain with now four minutes to go. I've got uh, SoFi up seven cents. Um, I'm so I'm showing, uh, what is a Rocket Lab up about maybe a nickel now, five cents. Uh, on the big stocks, Apple down a dollar. Goldman Sachs up 238. Cisco's up 21 cents. Tesla down 168. Nothing much to worry about there. Arc Innovations uh, up a dime. Microsoft up a dollar. Um, Nothing on Pfizer, HBQ up six, uh, Google down 28, and Amazon up 23, NVIDIA up 71, uh, Unity up 113, um, AI down 11, Adobe is uh, up 338, Netflix down 40. The Spiders are up 62 cents, the Triple Qs are up 25 cents right now. I think right now uh, Prime Day is going on on Amazon. I think that's happening today, so there's a lot of anticipation on how will that work out. We'll see what happens. Uh, and there's all kinds of rumors out there about how well or how not so well the Apple iPhone 15 Pro is doing, uh, advance orders and all that. There's a lot of speculation. There is every time, so we'll see how that plays out after a little bit. Not a lurker says, I am number 95 on your thumbs up meter. Good morning, all. Alberto, do they allow Costco pies? At the Outback, will they allow us to bring in a Costco pie? Oh, my gosh. Farmalist, I got hit on uh, by the hot manager at one of the Tulsa Outbacks when they forgot my cheese fries and blooming onion. <laughs> I, make, I make no promises. Uh, what's going to happen at the Outback in Secaucus, New Jersey? Uh, we will get together at the Outback on the 21st at 1 o'clock um on on saturday the 21st of october i'm looking forward to seeing you uh if any of you are are plotting to come out and you haven't already told me please tell me so that i can make sure the reservations cover all of us okay uh, we got plenty of room for you guys um according to the outback they're welcoming us with open arms fantastic all righty uh we should be opening in about a minute very close to the opening. Thank you for these thumbs ups, everybody. We appreciate them coming in. Uh, absolutely a beautiful thing. And 100 are now showing. Uh, can't beat that. Uh, I love the fact that we have 100 thumbs ups showing on the uh, program already. We're in the triple digits just as we're about to start trading. 
thank you everybody for uh, for popping in. Um, a number of you have picked up and checked out the trade tip of the day. You Gold Bagel members out there, um, hopefully you like what you see there and you might act on it. Uh, let me know if you do. Um, all righty. We're waiting now for uh, our uh, our um, move. Uh, have you have you got my notice, Uncle Bruce? Not a lurker anymore. I think so. I think you sent me a private email. Uh, didn't you do that just last week? Uh, um, I'm pretty sure I have that. Uh, I R Aaron says, "Good morning." Uh, Larry Titus says, "The bells have rung, Bruce. We are trading. Let's go, baby. Let's go." All right, I'm with you. Flint Creek, have you ever been in a similar situation while traveling? I have traveled into areas with conflict happening, but that was crazy. Uh, the closest thing for Jen and I. <clears throat> where we got caught uh, in a situation uh, was back in 1980, uh, way back when. We were mere children in 1980. Uh, um, milk teeth. What's that? Milk teeth. We were babies. We were babies, milk teeth. Uh, 1980, uh, we had traveled for a long weekend um, to uh, – to, uh, to uh, go to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho from Calgary. We drove all the way to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And we were spending uh, two nights at a hotel there. And uh, we were going to just drive around the area and see what it was like. Um, and we went for a drive on the uh, on the Saturday. We got there on the, I think we got there Friday night. And uh on the Saturday, we went for a spin in our car, and we went into uh, we went east of Coeur d'Alene into into Montana. Beautiful, gorgeous areas, glaciers and rivers and waterfalls. And we were having a wonderful time, and we were driving back towards uh, Coeur d'Alene, and we were looking at the sky uh, coming at us way away from us, and I thought, "Wow, we got a." We've had a sunny day, but it looks like we're getting some thunder showers. And as we were coming closer to Coeur d'Alene, it got darker and darker. And I thought, wow, this is going to be, maybe we might get hail. I mean, it could really be something. We turned on the radio because we were out of town uh, so far that we had no radio where we were. We were in amongst the mountains. We are coming back with our car. Finally got the radio on, and we had r rock and roll stations from Spokane on. And they were putting out the alert that Mount St. Helens had erupted. And that is not a thunderstorm cloud coming our way. That is volcanic ash fallout from Mount St. Helens that had blown out in the morning. And that was like six hours ago. We had no clue. We'd been gone all day. And uh, we drove immediately. I went immediately to one of these AutoZone stores. And I picked up a tarp that I was going to put over my car. And uh, we drove back to our hotel. And uh, I, I uh, got the tarp over the car. And then Jen and I had, we got four big rocks to put on the corners of each car, like underneath each corner of the car. We tied the tarp down on, with the rocks to hold it down. And um, just as we entered the hotel, the first ash began to filter down, just like snow. It looked like snow. We had no idea if it was acidic, whether it was uh, would burn your skin or not. We, we had no idea. Uh, who had been in a hurricane? Who had been in a volcano eruption before in Washington State or Alberta, Canada? Not me. Um, and we found out that uh, within a few hours, we had three inches of this stuff everywhere. And they closed the highways. We couldn't get out. And uh, we had to stay the Sunday, and we were supposed to come, come home on the Monday. We couldn't get out on the Monday. We were able to get out on the Tuesday. And uh, at the, the height of the whole event where we were, were six, eight inches of ash. And we were hundreds of miles from the volcano, hundreds. And we still had six, eight inches of, of volcanic ash. But we found out that it was not um, acidic and so on. And thankfully, the tarp did its job. The tarp did the job. Uh, unfortunately, now we had to drive out of there. Uh, but they brought out the snow plows. Uh, the, uh, you know, the city and the state of Washington and 
Idaho, they brought out their snow plows and they plowed the stuff off the roads as best they could. And as we headed north to Canada, we found that um, we were down to a quarter of an inch of coverage uh, because the, 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 the ash cloud went mainly to the east past uh, Coeur d'Alene and some of the ash made it to Canada, but not much. And we worked our way back to uh, Canada and we got to a car wash and we washed off the car. <laughs> And then we worked our way back to Calgary, and uh, the car was fine, had no issues whatsoever. I took it to the dealer the next day, had all the filters replaced, had the oil changed, an oil filter replaced. And they, they inspected. They said, no, you, no issues, no damage whatsoever to your car. You're fine. So that was the, the only other time that we were really caught in something that was uh, out of left field. I mean, that was wild. But uh, thankfully, we made it uh, out of Tel Aviv without any issues. Larry Titus says, Casino is open for business. Uh, Waverly, I flew out of New York on September the 10th, 2021. I was supposed to be on an airplane on September 11th. I was supposed to fly out of Vancouver to uh, Palm Desert, California at the end of a trip and never got to the airport and I never made it, uh, all the events that happened. I was considering changing my flights for later. Was super glad I didn't. Well done, Waverly, wing commander, number 108. Did I miss anything? On I will full of a took. I'm number 110 on the thumbs up meter. Thank you, my friend, and all of you who are here today. Uh, we are higher. Um, that I'll grant you that on the uh, markets. Um, let's take a look here. Uh, let's see exactly what we're looking at right now. We got uh, we got GameStop up 16 cents, and SoFi is up a nickel uh, at the moment. We got Enphase Energy at 121.61, up a dollar 80. That's looking pretty good. I know a guy who has uh, who had something going there, uh, but on the uh, U.S. markets, we're up 68 on the Dow, eight on S and P, and fifteen on Nasdaq. So we have an up session at the moment, but not very strongly higher. It's green, but it's not mega green at the moment. We got oil down 21 cents at 86.17 a barrel in Texas, down 21. Mm, that's what I've got right now. Whew. Mm, there we go. All righty, all righty, all righty. Uh, what else is happening here? Um, thank you all. Larry Titus, I, I missed the, uh, the 2017 Westminster Bridge London terror attack by the skin of my teeth. The one, the one where a car started running down pedestrians walking on the bridge. I was on that bridge. Oh, my gosh, Larry. Isn't that amazing? That bridge now has all of these bollards. So the pedestrians are behind, you know, barriers and stuff. And, oh, my God. Terrible. Just, just it's incredible, isn't it? You never know where it'll happen, when, what. You don't know what, you know, you have no idea what's coming next. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I was in uh, in Manhattan uh, in, uh, uh, in, two, in, in 2000. Uh, um, in 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 2000, um, and uh, it was a year and a couple months later, 2001, September 9/11. Yeah, but I was supposed to fly from Vancouver to Palm Desert. Couldn't get out of Vancouver. Couldn't get out of Canada that day, uh, Tuesday. Uh, it was Friday. I was able to get out of Canada by uh, taking a Greyhound bus, of all things. From downtown Vancouver to downtown Seattle, I ended up on a Greyhound bus, and uh, that was uh, four or five hours. And then I took a cab to uh, SeaTac Airport in Seattle, and I had booked on um, a flight on um, Southwest Airlines because they were operating again. And they flew. Uh, I ended up flying from Seattle to Oakland, Oakland to Ontario, California, and uh, Jennifer and Jen Jr came and picked me up from Palm, Palm Desert because we were living at that time in Palm Desert. So they came up with a car, picked me up at midnight, and uh, boy, was uh, that was, yeah, it was about 11 o'clock midnight. And that was a long, long day and a long week, let me tell you. We were grateful to be together again because we had no idea what was going to happen and how and where and what. It was just thought it was crazy at that time. Hector, Uncle Bruce, over the past few weeks with this market slide, you commented that GameStop does not want to drop. Uh, earnings report should make it pop, and what strike should we be writing? Well, 
uh, you know, I, I kind of mentioned that it looked like this 14 range, you know, 15 range is kind of it. Uh, we're up 13 now to 15.53. The earnings, though, won't be out for a while. Uh, GameStop earnings, um, let me just take a look at my list. Uh, December 7th, I mean, you know, what are we at here? October 10th? We got two more months before we even get the results from GameStop. So I don't expect a run all the way up between now and then, just straight up run. I'd like to expect that. I'd like to say, oh, that's exactly what's going to happen. Um, I can't. Uh, I have no idea what GameStop will say next. What's their, you know, do they ever talk? You, you know, you know how GameStop works. They're secretive, so quiet. But yeah, the shares are better. Uh, the question now is, what do you write? Should you write January calls? Should you write January 1750s, uh, 18s, 19s, 20s? Should you write March calls for 2024? Should you write all the way out to there and try to write 18 to 20s? Can you bring in two, two and a half, three dollars on, on some of these calls? Uh, cash is king, man. Bring in cash and dare them to come and get you. You can always do a rollover if the stock takes off. Flint Creek, I was 18 in Peru during Shining Path terrorist conflicts and Costa Rica during Sand, Sandinista uprising in Nicaragua. Fortunately, I never encountered a problem. My gosh. Wow. Larry, how frightening. A Waverly. Um, yikes, Larry Titus. Yeah. You just never know, do you? You just never, ever know. We were just, you know, we were thinking of driving towards Spokane and heading towards Mount St. Helens. We were thinking, well, maybe we should go that direction and check that volcano out. <laughs> we didn't. We stayed in that Coeur d'Alene area and we went more towards the east rather than the west. I'm glad we did. Could have been under a foot of this stuff or two or whatever. It was nuts. Uh, Farmhouse, the electrical contractor I used to work for actually escaped Saigon on one of the last helicopters. Uh, he had a lot of stories to tell. Man, there's a video out there, a really good video uh, that I think is on, uh, it's either on Netflix or it's on Prime. It's on one of these services, Escape from uh, from Saigon, The Last Days. Incredible. Uh, there, there are some really good stories there. Um, talking about, it's done by people who, you know, lived it, uh, reporters, um, embassy staff, uh, military people, uh, actual Vietnamese, South Vietnamese uh, people who were in the um, military and others, how they got out, um, all kinds of ways they had to get out. It was, it, it's an incredible movie, really. To me, it's riveting. It's just riveting. We're up 19 on GameStop, 15.59. Uh, we're up 20 cents now, 15.60. Uh, SoFi, 8.30 a share, up 11 at the moment a little bit better yeah you never know you know where you are where you're going to be and what's going to happen uh i just uh you know thank goodness for the for jen and i we got out of tel aviv on the last day of normalcy uh friday um october the uh whatever date that was october uh, 6th uh we left tel aviv on schedule no fanfare uh, 7, 10 in the morning, our flight took off. We were on El Al Airlines, uh, the Israeli national airline, and uh, we landed in uh, Zurich um, with no issues, clear, beautiful day, calm. Uh, the rest of the day was a normal day. That whole Friday was a normal, normal day. And when we woke up on uh, Saturday morning, um, I'm looking at my phone and I'm just looking at BBC News and see what what's the stories, what's the stories on CNN, okay. Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Washington Post, CBC Canada, what well, you know, just whatever I watch. And lead story after lead story after lead story. Israel, 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 Israel. What the hell is going on? We just got out of there yesterday. And uh, that was something. That really, really was something. Uh, who cares? Says uh, my dad worked for Grumman way back and was in a, was in Iran, building F-14s in Iran. 
He escaped as the government collapsed just days before the hostages were taken. My God, isn't that isn't that incredible? Um, wow, that's that is something else. Um, who cares? Says uh, escaping a country as it implodes is madness. Yes, I can imagine. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, just oh my God, I know. Like Jen and I, we were talking about you know had this happened before our flight you know if it happened on the wednesday or the thursday what we would have done i'm sure is we would have uh, gone online to book a ticket out of town on the next available flight anywhere in europe i mean just go to europe anywhere so can we go to can we go to istanbul can we go to athens could we go to rome could we go to you know venice could we go to uh, Barcelona could we fly to Vienna it didn't matter I mean we would have gone we would have picked any airline any way out uh and then gone to the airport and uh you know just get in line and hopefully get a boarding pass and get out that would have been our plan uh that would have been our attempted plan because there was no way we could drive out of there it's not like we can drive through Lebanon go north and <laughs> then drive through Syria and drive through Turkey. I mean, that's not going to happen. So you got to fly out of there. And uh, um, in theory, we could have gone on a flight. I believe we could have done a flight to Dubai because there were fl there are flights to Dubai now. And then we would have been able to book a Dubai flight to Zurich and continued our break here. But, uh, you know, everything was normal when we left town. I mean, as normal as it could be, because as I said, even leaving, uh, I kind of just kind of went, well, you know, we we were here for four days and it it was great to see Beach Boy. It really was it was it was the highlight of the whole the whole point of it of it was to surprise him. It worked out. Uh, but now, you know, we 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 gotta go. And uh I kinda I just, you know, it just didn't feel normal <laughs> never never felt that way before um i wasn't shaking or anything i wasn't like oh it just it just you just kind of everything looks normal everything everything seems normal uh the people who work here they're normal they're they're used to this uh i'm not used to this vibe this vibe was just not part of my world the vibe at the hotel the vibe at a shopping mall, the vibe in the restaurants was quasi just off, just not, mm, just not there. And uh, well, you know, maybe my antenna were were up. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. What can I say? Uh, it is what it is. Uh, what I, what I'm amazed by is that in 1959, uh, my my father, who was in the Canadian Army was posted in west germany for for two years that turned out to be three years and we had to leave canada take a ship over an ocean liner to germany and that was my dad my mom my sister and i and we ended up uh, about 30 miles or 25 miles away from the east german border in a uh, in an army uh area um a military area nato and uh my dad was in the canadian army under under nato at that time and uh we lived in a in a apartment kind of place um, not too far away from the base and uh i was uh four until i was seven i knew nothing i knew from nothing and my mom and dad were thrilled to be in germany they were thrilled to be in west germany they had survived the war, the Second World War. They had left as refugees to come to Canada. They went back uh, as my dad, in, being in the army, getting paid Canadian dollars when West German marks were, you, you get four West German marks for a Canadian dollar at that time. <clears throat> Canadian army guys, U.S. army guys, the Brits, the French, we were wealthy compared to the Germans, the West Germans. In those days, uh, through the 50s and the early 60s, the army guys were wealthy compared to the locals. 
by the mid 60s it turned it turned because that is when the north american economies weren't so dominant anymore the west german economy was coming on big time because everything in west germany was brand new all new plumbing all new electric all new natural gas all new factories all of the latest newest factory equipment the most modern factories in the world were in germany and so they were so efficient they had to be because they had a lack of labor anyone that's physical a physically able to work in germany got a job no problem germany was on fire economically and so the german mark the west german mark started to rise against the u.s dollar the canadian dollar the british pound and so all of a sudden within five years from 65 until 70 and from 70 to 75 canadian soldiers were poor they were not rich anymore but my dad in 59 60 61 living the life of luxury in west germany having just left the country in 1952 destitute and broke to get to canada to try and make a go of it it was such a turnaround for him but when he visited germany with my mother in the mid 70s late 70s they would come back and say it's not the same it's not the same anymore germany is very expensive it was quite an interesting uh, thing uh farmers i was in the in the band at the university of oklahoma in 2005 when a guy blew himself up outside of the stadium oh my gosh hawkeye number 119 thank you for the thumbs up hawkeye it's incredible where we are you know where you could be at any one time isn't it isn't it just the wildest thing you just never know 119 thumbs ups thank you all so much for uh, triple digits and keeping them coming in appreciate you all uh it is a wonderful thing to see uh we are holding a 54 58 point gain on the dow uh 0.16 of a percentage point that's it there's nothing here um the s p 500 is up 10.8 points that's a quarter of a percentage point nasdaq is up 34 points a quarter of a percentage point that's all uh there's not a lot good happening here it's not bad but it isn't good either uh oil down 33 cents to 86 dollars 12 cents a barrel pr approximately it's jumping around who cares says i am number 120 on that thumbs up meter thank you my friend uh dude glad you're safe uncle bruce and auntie jen we are too we hopefully won't have any events happening in the uh, zermatt to worry about hopefully all is well here in Zerman. I'm sure we'll be fine the question is will we survive New Jersey that is the next big one are we going to survive the meet and greet with you folks on the 21st of October in Secaucus New Jersey that that could be the one where I need extra security we'll have to see how that works out <laughs> will the manager at the outback forbid you to come in with a costco pie that is the question left and right we'll have to see how that plays and maybe if we offer them a piece they might they won't mind so much <laughs> who doesn't like a good old piece of costco pie i mean come on you got you gotta love that oh my oh my 123.30 on end phase up 360 today that's got a nice pop to it We've got GameStop up 31 to 1571. We got SoFi at 834 up 16. Apple just down 52 cents. Netflix down a couple of bucks. Adobe up 340. AI is up a buck six, 2577. NVIDIA up 80 cents. Tesla is now green, 264. Who wrote those cash secured puts? Is that was that Cindy B doing that? uh rocket lab is up 14 and a half cents to 476 could five dollars be just around the corner again that'd be nice matterport up six cents smart rent up three and a half owens corning up 93 atip down 13 unity up a dollar 30 at 31 dollars google down 31 cents moderna is up 161 cisco down five pfizer down just seven cents ibm up 58 uh, HPQ is up 31. Microsoft down a dollar 48 to 328 after hitting 331 today. ME uh, trying to gain a penny here. Amazon up a dollar 12. HD Home Depot up 56 cents. 
We got the Vanek Vectors, the uh, ETF for semiconductors, up 77 cents there. Goldman Sachs, a dollar 47 up. Uh, Boeing is up 141. Uh, Facebook Meta up 107. Target up 262. JP Morgan up a dollar nine. Costco up a dollar three. Walmart up 82. Disney under pressure, 84.54 down 16 cents. Uh, what else is going on? A American Airlines is down is up 32 cents to 1256. DraftKings up 62 cents. Uh, AMC is up 22, and Royal Caribbean up a dollar 77 at 90 bucks. Right at the moment, 90 bucks. I'm imagining that uh, cruise ships will avoid going to Israel and avoid that region they might avoid egypt i don't know they might not go to cairo we'll see um the suez canal i don't know how that's gonna go um petra jordan i don't know um time will tell we'll, we'll just you know that region is a a powder keg that's the problem yeah maria powell tesla cash secured puts are good too Maria Powell, ENPH cash secured puts are looking good. Brian, number 122, thank you. Beach Boy, Uncle Bruce, it was great spending time with you. I'm scratching the cara, cara, <laughs> carbonara itch. <laughs> it was great seeing you, man. It was just great being with you. Uh, every night, Jen and I went, to get, went, went out with Beach Boy for three nights in a row. We had some fun. He, he's a great guy. Um, what else? Uh, Beach Boy, by the way, wrote a few SoFi Jan 10 cash secured puts for 218 today. Ah, uh, well done, sir. Well done. Stephen Butler, go SoFi Go. JR, late riser today. Good morning, everybody. 118. Welcome, JR, to the show. Glad to have you here. Glad to have all of you here from wherever you folks are watching us today not a lurker anymore hello beach boy how the heck are you uh sure hoping everything is well with beach boy uh 1578 on the GameStop. we're up 38 cents today two and a half percent gain sofi 834 up 16 climbing again on the sofi shares 123 on enphase up 345 you gotta love how enphase keeps going up especially with those folks writing cash secured puts on it. Well done, everybody. We're up only 27 on the Dow. We're up 10 on S&P. We're up 34 on NASDAQ at the moment. All right. Well, that is the story, and I am sticking to it, not giving up on it. We're down 35 cents on oil at 86.03 right now. There you have it, everyone. That is the story. At the moment, from uh, Zermatt in uh, Switzerland. If you have never been to Zermatt, uh, it's a treat. It's a pretty cool place to come to. Uh, we, uh, we, uh, I'd recommend it. <laughs> I'd recommend it highly. Uh, but, you know, it's got to work for you. I totally get that. I think it's time to honor the Knights of Knee and uh, thank the Knights of Knee for helping Jen and I get to uh, Tel Aviv, uh, out of Tel Aviv into uh, Zurich without incident. And uh, here we are in Zermatt. We let the Knights of Nino. know. We acknowledge them and their powers. Uh, we don't mess with the Knights of Nino. We know these guys mean business. Neat, 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 neat. Absolutely. And there you go. The Knights of Nino emoji attack is underway. And here they come, uh, Larry Titus, knee, 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 Maria Powell, knee, 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 Dean, knee, 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 Maria again, Luca, knee, 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 Brian is in there, knee, 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 Flint Creek, knee, 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 knee. Everywhere in the world, people are opening their windows and yelling out at the top of their lungs, knee, 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 that's how you do it, absolutely all well done. Uh, Constantine, neat, neat, deep value options, neat, 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 lame duck, neat, 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 DH Ruda, neat, neat. <laughs> it all depends how long your delay is. Uh, that's how long it takes for the knee emojis to show up out here. Hector, neat, neat. Some of them take five minutes. People don't realize they're on a delay, a delay, a delay. You just got to, you got to refresh your feed sometimes and catch up with it. Karen is here, neat, neat, Hector, neat, 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 neat. That's right. Don't mess with the Knights of Knee. They will get you for that. Uh, right on, everybody. Fifteen seventy-six on GameStop. Could we see sixteen dollars on GameStop? It looks like it wants to go higher. Uh, giddy up, baby. Just keep it going. 
Don't stop now, GameStop. Take it all the way. Let's roll this puppy. Why not? Let's take this run and go with it. Yes. All righty. U.S. markets are up today. 30 on the Dow, 12 on S&P, 47 on NASDAQ. Trying to hold the uh, trying to hold the gains. Oil down 50 cents. That's good news. Beach Boy. Neat, 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 neat. He's there. He's there. Cannot deny Beach Boy. Right on, everybody. Good stuff, everybody. 1573 on GameStop. High today, 1579. So far, 833 uh, so far today. Uh, 2.4 million volume. Really quiet. I, I mean, quiet on SoFi. And yet, it's up again. There's no selling. There's no selling. Uh, low of 821, high of 837. We're at 834. SoFi near the highs of the day on nothing volume. Just nothing. That's a sign. No one's selling nibblers coming in. Can't get stock. Dude, neat, neat, neat. We're here, JR. Neat, 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 neat. I'm here too. Right on, everybody. Get, keep those neat emojis coming on in, folks. Fantastic stuff. Oh, my, 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 my. Thank you all so much for uh, being part of this uh, this uh, uh, group today. We, we love having you. Um, it's uh, fantastic that you've joined us. <clears throat> it's just amazing how many junk mails we get all the time. It's unbelievable. The junk mails that keep coming in, it's unreal. Uh, but thank you all for, uh, for popping in to see us today. Thank you, those of you who are subscribing, becoming members. Uh, those of you who are becoming Gold Bagel members. Those of you who are uh, signing up for classes. Uh, we appreciate it. I haven't been promoting the classes in any real way. Uh, we're we're you know we're out here um, on the road right now, and uh, I really have to get my act together to let the world know that our classes exist. Um, is there anybody watching, by the way, uh, that uh, is an expert, or does anyone know someone? Maybe that's the way to say it. Does anybody here know somebody that is an expert at uh, marketing um, online content? Um, I'm trying to find a way to promote my website and the classes on the website. I, I know it needs adjusting. <laughs> there will be changes that have to be made. Uh, but if anyone out there knows how to, uh, to do that, I would like to uh, start to uh, uh, expose the classes to a, an audience beyond my channel uh, at the moment the only people that know my classes are those who view here view me here um on this show and uh, i would like to get to the probably five million others out there that might need to know how to write stock options and make money in the market it could also uh, i know for a fact that if i can sell classes to people not affiliated with this channel that will increase viewership of this channel. Now, that would be another benefit. I'd like that. Um, but if anyone does know anyone, send me a private email. Uh, let me know. Uh, hey, Flint, please bring me four cashmere to the meeting, uh, says JR. Um, the Big E is here. Neat, 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 neat. Thank you, Big E. Um, yeah, if any of you know someone that is uh, is known for being very talented in the expert field of uh online sales uh, how to sell something that is an online product how to properly promote it how to present it how to expose it uh that would be uh would be appreciated because i am uh, utterly useless in that department uh, i can barely run a youtube channel let alone uh, um, go further than that um anyway yeah by all means do send uh, send me a, a private email and if you can introduce me to someone you know or someone that you've used or someone you know that uses someone that's really happy with it, uh, that would be great. I'll take I'll take that, um, and uh, we'll kind of go from there. Um, definitely want to uh, to uh, beef up the uh, the class uh, side of the equation, and uh, uh, hopefully from that additional viewers will be found with this channel from it i am certain of it because once someone starts taking the classes they'll join the show here and they'll go oh wow i can see this guy every day live and take his classes oh wow no wonder his viewers are happy with this guy yeah of course i'm going to become a gold bagel member too um 
and that just feeds into the momentum of the channel right so thank you all if any of you can help out do let me know uh we now have 130 thumbs ups on this uh, show going right now as best as i can tell you i'm gonna refresh my page because it looks like i've been frozen in time right now totally frozen in time hopefully we are uh, current and that you can see me live uh brian uncle bruce with the deep money calls if you buy more to average down will you still recommend the 90 10 rule uh, yes i do uh, i do recommend the 90 10 rule you don't want to overpay for contracts uh, even though you're buying them for a lower price you want to still get them in the 90 10 rule absolutely so if you don't get the ones that are identical to the ones you have then take a look at deeper in the money calls that are under the 90-10 rule and grab those. Also, take a look at longer term contracts. If you're sitting on a bunch of January 2025s and you can now start buying January 2026s, start getting those because uh, you're going to move forward anyway and uh, look into that. Uh, I mean, the price of the money call right now on GameStop are half what I paid, but not 90-10. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. Uh, look at deeper in the money or look for 2026 and start grabbing those. Uh, keep writing on the ones you have, but adding new ones over there. And, and then eventually you'll shift what you have down the road to the new ones. But for now, yeah, keep it going. All righty. Hopefully that makes sense. I, I, I think I got that. Thank you all very, very much. Uh, we are, here we go. We're still waiting for the updates. 130 thumbs ups are uh, officially in. Thank you, everyone. And thank you for the knee emoji uh, responses. Absolutely fabulous. Oh, I will mention to those of you who have joined us just in the last 20 minutes, <clears throat> there's been a change of venue for the meet and greet. <laughs> The bad news is we are we're meeting in a different venue. The good news is where you were going to park your car if you're driving in to meet me and Jen at the Harmony Suites, you're going to still park your car in the same parkade. We're next door to the Harmony uh, Hotel. We're now in the Outback Steakhouse. And if you take a look at Secaucus, New Jersey. Enter Outback Steakhouse on your Google Maps. That'll zoom you right in to the Outback in Secaucus. And as you zoom in on it, you'll notice, oh, right beside it is the Harmony Suites where we were going to hold the meet and greet. We're now going to do it at the, uh, the Outback instead. Um, we have uh, cornered a part, a part of the restaurant for ourselves, and we're going to meet at 1 o'clock in the afternoon until about 3 or 4 uh, in the afternoon, and it's on me except alcohol. Uh, whatever beer you want, and whatever that's on you, but if you're hungry, uh, you want a snack, you want a, a, a pop or a coffee or something like that, we're covering that. Uh, come on out and enjoy a get-together. Those of you who have already let me know you're coming, you're automatically uh, set for a for a spot. If you are coming and you haven't let me know yet, please send me a private email saying, Bruce, uh, I'm bringing my wife or my buddy or I'm coming on my own. Add me to the list, and that way I can finalize the final number of reservations. Uh, so far, we got a block done. A, a block booking has been made. Just want to make sure we have enough seats for everybody. So far, it looks pretty good. Thank you all very, very much. Fool of a took. Bruce, I'm writing SPY Condors. I typically try to make sure I never end the trading day in the money. However, should I rush to roll during the trading day if they happen to go in the money? Well, if they are heading that direction, you want to be looking to roll both of your positions. You want to get the, uh, the one that's way out of the money closer to the money and get yourself a credit. And you'll use that uh, to help compensate for shifting the ones that are towards the money to go further out. Now, you might find that if your condors are expiring shortly, like this week, next week sometime, you might decide that the rollover actually is not just going to be a rollover for the same expiry. You're now going to do a rollover for the calls and the puts two weeks or three weeks down the road, like way down the road 
for a much higher credit with a much wider spread so that you're going to take your at the money in the money position and move it way out and move the other one closer but have a wide spread nonetheless because you're giving up two to three weeks of time which will give you a lot of credit to compensate you uh, that would be the way to go like how much sense of urgency should i have with that trying to avoid a bunch of day trades by rolling the same contracts more than once in the day yeah you should not be that close you should not ever be that close you really want to be ten dollars away at all times you really want to be out there uh it's the smart way to go uh brian thoughts on writing some gamestop april 2024 18 or 19 strikes do it do it take as much money as you can get your hands on Fool, that's why I typically like to do my rolls towards the end of the trading day, even if I spend some time in the money. Spicy Android, can I order to go bloom an onion, just ship it to Washington? Ah, uh, we'll get back to you on that. Fool of a took the, the these are two to four day contracts. Yeah, you got to go out. You're 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 too close in the money. Uh, if you're constantly looking to do that, you're too close in the money. You gotta go go four to six days out, eight days out, and you can take a bigger spread. You need more protection. Uh, because these uh, spreads can get you and it'll allow you to bring a bigger credit into your hands you'll you'll be fine you'll still you won't wait until the end anyway on those even if you go eight days out you might close the position with two days to go and take your pound of flesh and then create another eight day contract 10 day contract whatever but uh, uh, and take a look if you're a gold bagel member take a look at all the trades that we've recommended that i've put out there uh, I've done triple Qs and SPY uh, uh, recommended trades, and they're a month out. Uh, you really want to look into those because they're really comfy to work with. Uh, Larry, spicy, I'll bring you one back, but you have to be in the right Washington, buddy, because if you're in Washington State and I'm in Washington, D.C., this isn't going to work. Uh, Constantine, Uncle Bruce, what's a good cash secured put on SoFi? Should we write for November this year or all the way to January of next year? Constantine, if you're a Gold Bagel member, you were able to watch our recommended trade of the day, which exactly explained what to do with your SoFi shares. This is where 25 bucks a month is worth it for you to be a Gold Bagel member. Check that video out if you are a Gold Bagel member. If not, step it up and become a Gold Bagel member right now. Watch that trade, and you can watch all the trades I recommended all last week and the week before and take some notes and see how those trades are working out. Uh, it's time for you to step it up. Join the party, pal. There's a whole bunch of folks making moves here, bringing in De Niro uh, going, yeah, baby, let's go. Yes, I am, he says. Well, and check that video out. I put it out there this morning for you. Check it out, buddy. Absolutely. Fantastic. Uh, we've had a bunch of folks watch it already, but not all the Gold Bagel members have watched that uh, video. Uh, about half of you have watched it, maybe maybe about half. You guys got to step up and watch those trade recommendations. You never know which one works for you until you see it. I try so hard. I try so hard. It's not easy being me. Uh, thank you all for uh, popping through here, hanging out with us. Um, I sure hope uh, you guys can make some money. Look at the Rocket Lab. It's up 25 cents, 487. Who bought Rocket Lab when I told you to buy Rocket Lab three weeks ago? Remember 369, 370? You remember that was prices? 487 on Rocket Lab. I think we're heading for five here. This looks great. 481 on SoFi. Go, baby, go. GameStop up 49 cents, 8 1589 on your GameStop. We're we're going higher, baby. Going higher. Keep it going. Keep it going. Yes, 16 bucks. Please, let's run this puppy to 16 and more. You gotta love this. The Dow's up 150. We got a shot going now. Finally, S&P up 22, NASDAQ up 60. We're approaching half a percentage point gains. And look at the oil price, down 82 cents. Lovely, 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 lovely. This is what we want to see. This is good for stocks. Uh, fantastic. Matterport's up 7. 23andMe is up now 5 cents. Uh, Spire up uh, 2. Uh, ATIP down 13. Smart Rent up 5, 5.5. Five we got Apple just off 40 cents. Goldman up 180. Cisco up six. Tesla up five dollars. 
Uh, Arc up 95. Microsoft down 45 cents at 329. Pfizer down a dime, up a dime. Of HPQ up 40. Google down 89, but Amazon up 115. Nvidia is up two bucks. Unity up 160. AI up a buck 66. 2637 on the AI. Look at that. Adobe up 430. Uh, Netflix down 58 cents. The SPYs are up 237. The triple Q is up 181. Right on, everybody. Right on. Looking good. Looking good. Rocket Lab 489. This is $5 neighborhood here. We're up 5.8% on Rocket Lab. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Make my viewers rich, please. It's time. My viewers have expenses uh, that they need to address. Why not? 156 point gain on the Dow, 0.47. We're up 25 points in S&P, up almost 26 now, 0.59. NASDAQ up 73, up 0.54. We're moving up. Oil down 93 cents. It's fallen off. Nice. Very nice. Kind of like what I see here. Dude, Uncle Bruce, I'm doing great with iron condors. I'm starting to roll them to new expiries all by myself yes sir uh this is great constantine thank you i'm gonna be sorry i missed the email i just seen it now i got it thanks buddy thanks okay right on constantine yes constantine it's gonna be great 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 you guys uh let's go baby making some dough here payback time for the viewers uh we got october 30 or so far we got the results coming get ready Hopefully this stock just kind of inches, inches, inches. I'm a happy guy. Inch your way up there. Get back to 12, 14 bucks. Let's go, man. Gonna love that. Oh, baby. And uh, GameStop, 1588. Let's run this to 16 here. Why not? Yes, indeed. Uh, or more. How about more than 16? I'd like that too. Uh, I'm, I'm open. 160 point gain on the Dow. Keep it going. Uh, we had a good day yesterday. Let's get another one going here. Let's go. 125 on the end phase energy of 567. Looking good. GameStop 1591. We're nine cents away from $16 on GameStop. SoFi 847 up 29 cents. Right now, 847 going for eight and a half. We're we're looking better on SoFi all day long. Apple only down 29. Netflix down 59. Adobe up 448, AI up 171 to 2642, NVIDIA up 230, Tesla up 480, Rocket Lab 489 up 27 on Rocket Lab, only 826,000 traded, zero volume, and it's up nicely today. This is a huge indicator. There is no one getting out of this stuff. 490 on Rocket Lab, no one's getting out. Uh, nobody has stock to sell down here. Whoever wanted out got out a long time ago. They're gone. There's nobody left. This looks good. Matter put up six and a half. Smart brand is up six and a half. Come on, markets. Let's go. Um, SoFi volume now at 846 a share. Um, 3.8 million. Dead quiet. Dead quiet. You'd normally see 30, 40 million if this thing was taking a shot like this. Uh, this is looking good. This actually looks good. Fifteen ninety-five on GameStop, four hundred and seventy-four thousand traded. No volume. It's moving up. There's nothing for sale. The sellers are not here. They're they're way higher. This is a good sign. Uh, go GameStop. Go SoFi. I love it. If you wrote options last week, you got nothing to worry about. Um, you you need problems like rollovers. These are problems you want. Uh, let's see how that goes. All right. Thank you, everybody. Spicy Bruce. I have a, a $16 call on GameStop. It's expiring three weeks. Should I roll it or wait? Just wait. Just, just wait. Yeah, wait. Don't do nothing. Don't do nothing. Just wait. Looking good. 163.95 is the gain on the Dow now. Uh, we're, we're up over half a point here. Looking all right. Uh, we want more of this. Keep it coming, kids. Um, let's see. Let's see what's going on. There we are. Yep. Uh, up 0.48. S&P up 26. NASDAQ up 79. Uh, 15.95 on your GameStop. That's the high of the day, you guys. 15.95 on GameStop. Uh, uh, definitely looking better. Uh, definitely improving now. Uh, five days ago, uh, back a week ago, we were at 14.46. 
uh, at one point. Uh, let's see, uh, 30 day. Where else were we? How low? Um, I don't know. Yeah, we 14, 1440 range, kind of the low, wasn't it? It's about a dollar fifty ago. Isn't that something? Uh, we know that Mr. Cohen runs the show now, so you know that's no surprise. But I'm not surprised to see this move up. I'm just I've been expecting it for a while, and it's good to see. Fifteen ninety five on GameStop. Thank you. Eight forty seven on SoFi. And that uh, end phase up six bucks to one twenty five eighty eight, looking good. Spire four twelve up a nickel. Uh, keep it coming, guys. All righty. Brian, GameStop to sixteen is it is it going to close there? That's the question. Well, we'll find out. It's looking awfully good right now, um, and the market's improving. So, fifteen ninety nine right now on GameStop. We just hit fifteen ninety nine. There's a wall at 16, but I doubt it's very big. I doubt there's much there. $15.99 on the GameStop shares. Giddy, giddy up, kids. Giddy up. Going for 16 bucks on the GameStop. For break 16, it could go to 16, 20, 30. No problem. Could do it. We'll find out in a minute if there's enough oomph behind this thing. 847 on SoFi climbing uh, very nicely. This is the uh, around the high of 848 here. Looking good on SoFi, $15.99 on GameStop right now. Giddy up. I like it. $158 gain on the Dow. Thank you. Okay. Europe ended up with a more than a 1.5% gain, 1.6 to 1.75% gain in Europe today. Across the board. Yep, so it was a much better gain than we have going right now. Triple the gain that we're doing. We're only up a half a point. Europe's up one and a half triple what we're doing so all right let's see what it does uh, brian game stuff so far very nice green charts happy tuesday perhaps luca ciao uncle bruce stink offer hit on 10 cash secured puts on so far strike 10 for 240 per contract boom nice job brian GameStop, 15.99 print go baby go yes sir 15.99 is the high of the day we're at 15.98.99 right now and it's looking just great uh let's see if this another wave of buying comes in it might take it right through 16 164 on the dow we're climbing there okay nice very very nice we're up 0.6 on s p up 0.6 on nasdaq now 0.51 on the dow at 171 gain on the dow that's the high of the day right now we're climbing again. 80 points on NASDAQ. Highs of the day right here. There's buying coming in. No selling. There's, there's nothing for sale. <clears throat> uh, SoFi, 844 uh, at the moment. Uh, Apple is only down 15 cents now. All right. AI up 160. NVIDIA up 198. Tesla up 450. Rocket Lab up to 491. Up 29 on your Rocket Lab, guys. And $5 is just around the corner for rocket lab 493 high today we're right there 875,000. matterport up five and a half smart rent up six and a half go kids go 16 on gamestop i see it right here i see a trade going through 16 on your gamestop it is official that is the high of the day now on gamestop 16 bucks and we're at 15.99 16 right here and the question is if they take out 16 does it go to 16 10 and 20 right away because there could be a gap over that barrier if the barrier has nothing to it. We're about to find out here. Uh, 845 on uh, SoFi at the moment. Uh, 1599 to 16 on GameStop right now. Looking much better. 1607. GameStop, 1607. It just, just ran right through there. Anybody who shorted it at 14 something now is panicking. They're buying it up. Uh, they're trying to cover their shorts. And uh, woo -hoo, like Brian's saying, here we go, baby. 16 plus, 1609 on, on GameStop. 1609 now, as I was thinking, there would be nothing behind it. Uh, there would be no, there'd be a void there, and it would just jump higher. 846 on SoFi. 850 is a barrier. She could run to 860, 870, nothing to it. If this keeps coming, 1609 on GameStop with a 614 trade right now. GameStop's at the high of the day, 
1614 right now. GameStop jumping another nickel like a hot knife through butter. It just went through 16 like it wasn't even there. Awesome sauce, baby. Uh, volume 616,000. Nothing. Nothing. There's no volume on GameStop. There's nothing for sale. 612, 614, highs of the day right now. 847 on SoFi, looking to take out 850 maybe. This could be in for a little pop here too. We're up 29 on SoFi. GameStop up 73 cents right now. 1614, that's the high of the day. We're matching it yet again. 1614 right now as we sit here watching this market. Uh, Brian, I sold five GameStop April 18th for $2.59. I'm going to buy another deep in the money call. There you go. Thank you very much. Taking the cash. 1616. Thank you. A new high on your GameStop. Another couple of pennies. Uh, more buying coming in. Taking out offers. Just taking them out. Um, no problem. Uh, 846 on SoFi, up 27 cents. There you go, guys. Uh, Zed, Uncle Bruce, I have Purman cover calls on GameStop. Strike is 20 bucks. I sold for a dollar. They expire in January. Do I roll? Uh, you don't have to do anything right now. Just sit tight. Let the stock come up even more. Yeah, you don't have to do anything. Enjoy the run up with your market. Makes you richer. And let these contracts do whatever they're doing right now. Yeah, with $20 strike, no problem. 16 16 on the stock. Lovely. Absolutely lovely right now. Fantastic. This is only a partial correction. We got the, it was a 16 45, 42. Uh, the go to 17 18 is a nothing burger. A nothing burger. This came from the 23 25 range. So, you know, to come back three, four dollars. To 1980, that's a nothing burger. 1615, let's go, man. Bring it up, bring it up. 846 on SoFi. It's coming on too. SoFi starting to come in with volume. 848 on your SoFi. Looking for a new high, which it is. 848 is the new high on SoFi. Up 34.4 million. SoFi is about to go to 850. It might take it out. 1614 on uh, GameStop up 74 cents. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Very nice. Cash secured puts on GameStop. Cash secured puts on SoFi. Can be done. Let's see what it does, folks. Come on, baby. Bring it on. Bring it on. 172 point gain on the Dow. That's near the high of the day. Uh, we got. Uh, S&P up 27.8, and we got the NASDAQ up 93. Highs of the day on these markets, it looks like. Mm -hmm. 1614 on GameStop. High of the day, 1617. We're not giving up anything here. Uh, so far, 847, 848, the highs of the day right now. Woohoo! I love it. I'm loving this. 180 on the Dow. We just climbed again. This is another shot. Going up to 30 on the S&P 500. That's the high of the day. We're 100 points higher on the Dow. The high of the day right here, right now. 1610 on GameStop. 846 on SoFi. These guys could go another 10, 20 cents. There's more in there. There's, in, there's gas in the tank here. Um, there could be more. These big markets are definitely picking up some steam, which is good to see. Oil down 73 to 85, 65. Oil backing off. Right on. 1611 and 12 on GameStop. 846, 847 on SoFi. Um, right on. End phase up 639 to 126.14. Spires up 5.7 cents to 412. Apple is green, up 26. Netflix is only down two cents now. Adobe up 530. We got AI at 2643, up 172. NVIDIA up 280. Tesla up 560. Rocket Lab 491.9. That's 492 a share. The high of the day, 493. We're going for five bucks on Rocket Lab. A bunch of these resistance points are being approached here. We bust through them. We're going to go another 10, 20 cents. Uh, Rocket Lab could pop. At any time, Matterport 224 up seven, Smart Rent up eight and a half, 273 and a half. Those guys are super cheap. 
Unbelievably cheap. 179 gain on the Dow, 182 now on the Dow. 1610 GameStop, 846 SoFi. Um, and uh, 182 gain on the Dow, 2930 on SP, NASDAQ up 100. Nice. Very nice. Uh, you guys deserve it. No question about it. We deserve an update. A couple of them. We were oversold. This market is looking for an excuse to go higher. And where? They're finding it They're right here. Love to see the SoFi go through 850 and approach 9. A couple of days from now, break 9, go to 10. A couple of days after that, go to 1050, 11. Getting ready for those earnings to come out. Man, people at that 7 level didn't buy it. Unbelievable. Uh, what can I say? What can I say? You know, it is what it is. Uh, SoFi, 846. Uh, GameStop, 1610. Right near the highs of the day right now. Okay. Mm, 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 mm. Coming up to the end of this show from Zermatt. It's great to be with you talking stock markets rather than telling you about uh, how we're stuck in a war zone. I'm pretty happy to be talking to you about this from here. Um, I know that uh, we would have been safe in Tel Aviv. I'm sure of it. Uh, with Beach Boys' help, we would have been able to do what we needed to do. But uh, I'd rather be out of there and uh, be with you here and just concentrate on the markets and see if there's a way to get you guys to be richer than you already are. Let's just work on your wealth and build your uh, your positions and grow your accounts. That's where I want to concentrate my efforts. And I thank you all for your support and your kind words to Jennifer and I while we were uh, while we were uh, scrambling. Uh, thank you all for being here. Um, it's all good. Uh, get your hands on the, uh, make sure to check out the uh, gold bagel trade uh, tip of the day today. You're going to need it. Uh, today's market is there a good reason why you'd want to have this. Uh, Robert Benson is in the house. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Number 140, thumbs up. Copenhagen, how's it going, pal? Nice to see you. Um, and uh, we're uh, we're holding the gains pretty well, uh, right near the high on SoFi, at 8:46 now. Uh, GameStop 16:04.5 touched 16:17. We could go higher than that. We'll see how this the rest of this day goes. Keep an eye on those markets. Uh, keep working your condors. Uh, thank you all for becoming Gold Bagel members of this channel thank you for uh, your contributions picking up the classes um, and everything else uh, we're excited about this uh, this market for you guys dude i've been buying so at the lows i'm up to 1500 shares four cash secured puts bought two calls for january jan tens right on dude you're gonna make money lots and lots of money is my hunch it's what you're gonna make. You're gonna make money. Uh, right on. Keep them going, guys. Yes, sir. 1606, 846 uh, here on SoFi. 1646, 606, 1606 on GameStop. Dow's up 150. Spire up five cents now. Five six cents to 412, 413. All right, guys. Um, we will see you here tomorrow live from Zermatt. Thank you all so much for uh, being part of this channel. Love you guys. Uh, great to be here. Always great to be with you. Have a great rest of your day. Get richer. And thank you uh, for your support of this channel. We'll keep supporting you. And we'll be here tomorrow to follow this trade and these, these transactions and see where they go from here. Okay, everybody? Thank you all. Jen and I are saying goodbye from uh, Zermatt. Uh, th thank you, Waverly and uh, Sign. Hey, pal. Thank you all. I appreciate you. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye for now.